We often think of now as something absolute, a single shared moment, this second, that last heartbeat. But the truth is, the universe doesn't work that way. Every moment you've ever seen has already happened. The sunlight warming your face left the sun eight minutes ago. The glow of Jupiter is nearly an hour old. Even the reflection of yourself in a mirror is delayed by a few nanoseconds. And so, because of the finite speed of light, reality as we perceive it is actually always the past. But what if we take that idea and apply it to how the Earth is seen across the unimaginable distances of the universe? If now it's just an illusion, then what does the Earth look like from up there? You're watching The 101 Space. My name's Rob, and if you enjoy this video, please tap the like button and leave a comment. It really does help more than you can imagine. Light is the universe's messenger. It travels at roughly 300,000 kilometers per second, fast enough to circle the Earth 7.5 times in a single heartbeat. And yet, in cosmic terms, it's painfully slow, because the universe is unimaginably vast. When light leaves Earth, it doesn't just vanish into space, it carries with it a record of that exact moment. A continuous moving flow of photographs racing outward in every direction is a poetic way of thinking about it. Each photon, each tiny particle of light contains information, the color of an ocean, the glow of a city. Together, they paint an image of that moment as the light began its journey. Imagine standing on the moon, just as the Apollo astronauts did, and looking up at the Earth, a beautiful blue marble suspended in the black void. But what you're seeing isn't that exact moment, it's delayed. Light takes 1.3 seconds to travel from the Earth to the moon. By the time it reaches your eyes, the planet has already moved nearly 40 kilometers through space. Clouds have shifted, Billions of thoughts have been had, and four new babies have just entered the world. But of course we can take this even further. If someone were watching from Pluto right now, for example, they'd be seeing our world more than five hours ago. Can you remember what you were doing then? It's a strange thought. How much of your life passes in the time it takes light to reach Pluto? Because light takes time to travel, the further it goes, the older that moment becomes. What we see when we look into space isn't what is, but what was. Every star, every galaxy, every nebula are all ghosts of their former selves, still shining with the light of long vanished moments. And so, somewhere out there, drifting through the dark, are countless streams of photons carrying the story of our planet, the light of Earth's history, from the very beginning to this exact moment, spreading outward at the speed of light like ripples across a cosmic sea. Of course, in reality, the light from Earth becomes impossibly faint just a light year or so from home, lost among the brighter stars. Voyager's famous pale blue dot showed us Earth from 6 billion kilometers away, a distance where the planet was still bright enough to see. But stretch that distance to a single light year and Earth's existence fades into invisibility. Not because it disappears, but because its light spreads so thin across space that not even our current most powerful telescope could ever collect enough of it. So from here, let's think of Earth not as something visible, but as a reference point. Because this video isn't really about what we could see, it's about what those distances say about time. Let's suppose that at every destination we are about to visit, there is an impossible telescope. 
one that can see every photon that has ever left Earth from anywhere in the observable universe. And with it, we'll begin at our closest neighbour, four light years away. The Alpha Centauri system. There, through an impossible telescope at this exact moment, Earth is seen not as it is now, but as it was four years ago. As of this video, that's 2021. From Vega, one of the brightest stars in our sky, 25 years. Imagine if alien astronomers were orbiting that star right now with their own impossible telescope. They wouldn't see the world you're living in today. They'd see the light from a world as it was at the turn of the millennium, the year 2000. Homes lit by cathode ray screens. Early satellites just beginning to bring the internet to the masses. The International Space Station still under construction. Bill Clinton in the White House. Humanity celebrating a new century, unaware of what the decades ahead would bring. Speaking of time, there's something beautifully poetic about wearing a piece of the cosmos on your wrist. Last time I featured the grey dot, a remarkable timepiece that connects its wearer to the beginning of the solar system. But today, I'm showing you its equally stunning counterpart, the blue dot. Open the case, and that deep blue dial immediately stands out, catching the light like a distant planet beneath the stars. Every diatom watch is built with precision, sapphire crystal glass, a stainless steel case and bracelet, and a Swiss Ronda chronograph movement known for its reliability under pressure. At six o'clock is an orbiting ring that holds material that actually flew to the moon aboard Apollo 11. At 12, a fragment of meteorite, each one unique, forged over millions of years in the heart of an ancient asteroid. And like all diatom watches, the blue dot itself has flown to space, reaching over 100,000 feet above Earth. And as a space fan, it's exactly the kind of watch I love. A real conversation starter that connects you to the story of the solar system. With the current sale, plus my extra 10% off using the link below, it's never been easier to wear a true piece of space history. Take a look at Diatom's watches using my link in the description. Our galaxy is vast, about 100,000 light years across. And so from the far side of the Milky Way, the light from Earth is nearly 100,000 years old. From there, it would be as if humans are living in small family bands of hunter-gatherers. There are no glowing cities or satellites overhead, just scattered tribes carving stone tools and painting stories onto the walls of caves. The air is thick with ice and dust. Mammoths roam the plains. Wolves stalk the edges of firelight. And across the frozen tundra, small bands of our ancestors look up at the sky, the very sky that now holds the light of their moment in history. Earth is still a wild and untamed world from here, and the human story is just getting started. Beyond the Milky Way, at two and a half million light years away, lies the Andromeda Galaxy. From here, an observer looking through the impossible telescope right now would see Earth's light from 2.5 million years ago. Earth is cold and restless. Glaciers advance and retreat in great cycles of ice and thaw. Multiple human species walk the plains of Africa, shaping stones into tools as saber-toothed cats prowl the forests. From a galaxy 65 million light years away, such as NGC 3972, Earth's light would come from the end of the age of dinosaurs. A vast, vibrant planet where titanic creatures roamed before a cosmic impact would end their reign and reshape the course of life forever. Go further again 
to 150 million light years away, such as galaxy NGC 3995 and Earth's light would come from the late Jurassic period. Continents are actively drifting apart on an unrecognizable Earth. Flowering plants evolve for the first time. The oceans teem with colossal reptiles and strange life forms. The planet glows in tropical heat and a thick atmosphere. To distant observers, Earth is not a home of cities or machines. It's a blue-green jewel teeming with life that even we would find alien. One billion light years away, and any alien civilizations with the impossible telescope in the giant elliptical galaxy known as IC 1101 would see Earth right now as it was one billion years ago. A world so ancient it barely resembles the one we know. No humans, no dinosaurs, just a planet dominated by the sea and one supercontinent, Rodinia. Days only lasted 18 hours, and yet, beneath the waves, something remarkable is happening. The first complex life is taking shape. The first spark of everything that would one day walk, think, dream and build. Four billion light years? And the light now leaving Earth would reveal nothing more than a newborn world a molten sphere of rock and fire, still cooling from creation. The moon has just formed after a colossal impact. Asteroids rain down daily. Oceans are beginning to condense from steam. The planet's surface reshaping itself every few hours. And beyond 4.6 billion light years away, there is no Earth at all, no continents, no seas, no air, no promise of life. Only the swirling dust and gas that would one day become our sun. And around it, the faint material that would one day gather into this fragile blue world we call home. Of course, no one could actually take this journey. It is impossible to travel faster than the speed of light, meaning we could never get ahead of it. So we could never truly see Earth as it appears from those unimaginable distances. But we began with a question, what does Earth look like from across the universe? The answer is, it depends on when you look. To some, we are the age of the dinosaurs. To others, it is an ancient world of early humans. To others still, it is a lifeless planet of fire or ice. And yet, here we are, in the only true now we'll ever experience. A beautiful illusion called the present. If you've made it this far, thank you. You are exactly the kind of person I make these videos for. So please do leave a comment and like the video. It helps more than you can imagine. And if you want to go one step further and help support the channel directly, why not consider becoming a V101 core member or patron? The links are in the description. It keeps this project going and gives you some nice perks including your name in every single video and exclusive content. Either way, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.